Paul. Larry. I believe you know where I got this. Oh, absolutely. Which ties right into where we're headed next. Yes. May 31st, 2019. Our dream came true. Star Wars. Galaxy's, Galaxy's Edge. Edge. <laughs> so this display here that we have is all items from Galaxy's Edge. Including um, the sabers. Yes. And Galaxy's Edge, for those that may not know, is a land in Disneyland that is all based around Star Wars. And the universe of Galaxy's Edge takes place between Episode 8 and Episode 9. That's the, that's the universe that that's in. And it is full of Star Wars everything. Rides, you have the Millennium Falcon ride. Uh, Rise of Resistance, where you're helping the Resistance uh, get away from uh, uh, the First Order. Uh, you have characters walking around, Ray, Chewbacca, food. You are in the world of Batu. That's the, what the land is actually called, um, the land of Batu. And they speak the language of Star Wars. I mean, when, when I went in to buy the saber, I said, may the force be with you. And the salesman told me, oh, we don't say that out loud. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, they are in character. Yeah. So wherever you go, even in the cantina or the rides or whatever, Everybody that works in, in the Star Wars uh, Galaxy's Edge is in character. So let's dive into what we have here and give you a closer look of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. All right, so what you see here is a small collection of legacy lightsabers that are available to purchase from Doc Ondar's shop in Galaxy's Edge. It's a shop inside of the two that uh, you, you can walk in and they have all different types of uh, different legacy sabers. So the ones that you see here, we have at the top, we have um, Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi. On the bottom here are Ahsoka Tano's from uh, the Rebels cartoon. And on the top right here, we have uh, Rey's uh, from the sequel trilogy. Um, what can and, you... there's, and there's a bit of a story with that one yes. as well, because it's not just Rey's. This ties into three movies. This is Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber to begin with. And from that, Obi-Wan on Tatooine handed this saber to Luke and said that your father wanted you to have this, but your uncle wouldn't allow it. Mm. He'd follow on some adventure, Damn fool. adventure with the... <laughs> Obi-Wan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it was like... You know, this, this ties into the three movies, and it, it's consistent throughout, throughout those movies. And so I, when, when I went to Galaxy's Edge, I, you know, I, I was going to buy a lightsaber. I knew that. But when they demonstrated it in front of a customer just to show them how it would look, I was sold. So the question, you know, that they always ask is, well, uh, do you want to see any saber? And I go, no, I know which one I want. I want Ray's. <laughs> and what was funny, too, was... With Ray's saber, Paul then decided that he wanted to get that one. And when he went back to Galaxy's Edge, it was... Oh, it was sold out that day, yeah. But I did eventually get one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it says collect them all. So. Yeah. <laughs> but they have, um, Doc Ondor's shop there, they have um, a large selection of legacy sabers. You can also get Mace Windu's, Obi-Wan Kenobi's from the prequel trilogy, Darth Maul's, Ventress from Clone Wars. Um, they're coming out with Dooku. You know, all kinds of different savers for uh, different uh, uh, fans that are out there. And these are, they're very cool. Um, these are the, like I said, they're called the Legacy Sabers. Uh, very uh, high detail, very close to what uh, the lightsaber would look like in, in, in real life. Um, uh, if they were <laughs> for real. <laughs> uh, but the very good detail. And uh, what's great is you can put in... This is one of the um, blades that you can get with a saber. And you only need to buy one blade if, if you want to because each blade will go inside of each saber and work. All right, so I can actually use this blade, take it out, and put it inside one of the other um one of the other sabers if it can actually get it out <laughs> <laughs> so it's very uh very fun uh very cool um a lot of uh very highly collectible uh and a lot of fun um and the case yeah it comes with a case 
So, mm. you know, when you purchase it, uh, it's not just the saber alone, it's within this case. Of course, you'd have to buy the blade separately, but it's really very impressive the way they do this. So it would come in, in a nice little display case that you can have uh, if, when you're not playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the thing that I've been always envious with uh, Paul is that he can actually twirl the saber around. I keep dropping it every time I practice on the thing. <laughs> but um, yes, if... You'll learn. You'll <laughs> learn, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to retire soon, and now you know what I'm going yeah. to be doing. <laughs> um, but I love this this saber. I mean, it's it's really like owning a piece of that history of that story from you know a long time ago and I do uh, keep it visible to me so just like the Star Destroyer the Legos I keep this one always mm -hmm. you know near um, a little little trivia on this one Ray this Anakin Ray Luke's one <laughs> <laughs> the original um, this is actually uh, they've made this, not this one, but the prop in episode four out of a Graflex, I hope I'm saying it right, um, flash for cameras. Oh. So this was the handle, that, and, with the, and you'd have the big bulb thing here with the bulb, uh -huh. and it would be the flash for a camera. So this was, they actually created out of a flash for a camera. That huh. was, turned into a lightsaber. And if you think about it, I mean, you can make a lightsaber out of any tube mm. and whatnot. So... Um, you know, then when you get into that was 1970s when they created the um, original lightsaber. So they, it makes sense that they're trying to use stuff and just tool, you know, make it look cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when you get into like the uh, uh, Return of the Jedi in '83, you start to get more of they can machine it and then you know make it however way they want to, they want to look. They had the budget to do that, I'm sure, versus the 1970s. In um Galaxy's Edge, did they have a store or a, a place where you could build your own? Mm. What was yes, it? Uh, Savvy's Workshop. And um, you can go in there and build your own lightsaber. And it's actually, you need to make a reservation. And it is, uh, you can build uh, your lightsaber based off of different elements. So it was based off of like, um, like I don't know, plants or metal or I don't know. It's some things you can choose from. I haven't done it yet <laughs> myself. <laughs> uh, but you can build your own lightsaber, put your own kyber crystal in there, you choose your color and everything, and, and then um, at the end you have a little ceremony uh, where you become uh, a, a owner of it, and the uh, um, uh, Jedi of that, that saber. But yeah, you have a... Uh, where you uh, go in there and you... Um, uh, build your own lightsaber, and there's a little ceremony that uh, allows you uh, to activate it, and then you become one with the Force and whatnot, and Yoda speaks, and uh, you leave away for with 200 bucks, and you have your own lightsaber you just built. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, I mentioned the kyber crystal that was... Um, Actually, Rogue One, wasn't it? The kyber crystals came out... Yeah, in Rogue One, they talked about kyber crystals. Yeah, that was the uh, crystals they were mining in... Um, Jetta. Uh, Jetta, yeah. I was thinking of uh, Jakku, but no, Jeddah yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, in Rogue One. And that's what, what these are. These are actually from Galaxy's Edge as well. These are the kyber crystals. This is a red kyber crystal. And um, you would purchase these in uh, Doc Ondor's. And uh, you wouldn't know what's inside. So you buy, you buy this, and it has um, this inside it. And you wouldn't know which one you would get. You know, it could be Vader or it could be Palpatine or whatever. Um, and then what would happen is you have, uh, you can buy these other things called the Holocron, whether it be the Jedi Holocron or Sith Holocron, that you would put these crystals in and that would let you talk or interact with the dead Jedi. So you can buy blue ones of these and talk to Obi-Wan Kenobi. You can buy green ones of these and talk to Qui-Gon or Yoda. White one is Ahsoka. Um, red ones is, are the Sith, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. And there's actually, um, in these red kyber crystal ones, um, there is a chase crystal, a black crystal, uh, that you can you can get. Very hard to get. But if you do get it, very rare, worth worth quite a bit of money, um, you can talk to, uh, I believe it is Snoke, is oh. one of them. I think there's a few different characters, but Snoke is one of them. And huh. not. Uh, so, yeah, these are the, the crystals that uh, 
um, allow you to talk to the Jedi. Their stories are in here. All right, in addition to the lightsabers, another fun thing to do in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in the Land of Batu is eat. <laughs> it's to eat and drink. And uh, drink. And drink. And, <laughs> and drinking, I mean, okay, they do have some uh, very cool um, uh, soda, uh, people selling soda and, and drinks, um, carts throughout Galaxy's Edge. They look like old, uh, uh, looks like old, um, trailers and stuff with a droid pulling it and everything and whatnot and so where you can purchase these um star wars galaxy's edge coke so you have a regular coke here uh you got sprite you know a little sprite bottle here as well as i have a diet coke these are the three that you can purchase and these are um unique in a sense that these are the sodas but it is in the shape of a thermal detonator <laughs> And fun fact, uh, when these first came out in Florida, uh, people were buying these in Florida and then putting it into their luggage uh, when they're getting on air, their airplanes. And TSA was like, what are these things? They had to take, take them out because they looked like thermal detonators. They didn't know what they were. They thought they were a weapon. And they're like, no, these are just Coke bottles from Disney. <laughs> and so I think it's okay now. You know, I think they got the hint. But that's classic. Uh, but it's very cool. So it looks like a thermal detonator. It has the, uh, it says Diet Coke in the Arabush. Uh, that's the language of Star Wars. Oh, yes. Um, uh, not the, the alphabet of Star Wars, the uh, Arabush. This is written in here. And um, very cool. So here's Coca-Cola and Arabush. And then also we have um, Sprite in the um, Arabush language as well. And then also you can purchase water. This is Dasani in uh, Arabush. I always wondered I what the language way. was called. <laughs> yeah, and actually the language um, isn't from directly like from Lucas and stuff. The uh, Arabush language, uh, the alphabet from it, uh, with all those weird letters, was actually created uh, for the board uh, for the role playing game. Oh. Uh, back in like the you know late seventies, early eighties, and stuff, and so that that was that was part of it. When you go to the cantina in Galaxy's Edge, I mean, it's it really does look like the cantina uh, from the bar and from, you know, where you're sitting. Um, the interesting things is, you know, the drinks, some of them have like dry ice and you can actually see them smoking. Those are really cool. <laughs> they yeah. are cool. Uh, you could also buy a collectible uh, mug from the bar, the cantina. And this was one of them. And then they oh. sold another one that was... Uh, that looked like a porg. Mm -hmm. They were uh, these are tiki cups. So if anybody is a tiki cup collector, they're out there. Um, these were the the mugs for um, the drinks. And this one here, the the porg one was for the cliff dweller. That is a non-alcoholic drink. And uh, this one here was the yub nub, <laughs> and that was an alcoholic drink. <laughs> I gotta admit the. Uh... The beers that they had there tasted kind of familiar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is this <laughs> <laughs> Dozakis? Yeah. But you know, this is this is really great because I mean, the types of drinks they have there were were um, very unique, kind of spacey looking. But then also the names that they used, uh, like for example, you have Hyperdrive Punch, Java Juice, <laughs> Blurg Fire, the Carbon Freeze. You know, and that. And then you have here that the Jedi in, mind yeah. trick. Yeah. Bespin Fizz. Dagobah Slug Slinger. Um, the beers that uh, Larry's talking about. There was this one uh, that was the uh, a uh, four. You can try four different beers. Right. And it was uh, the Spice Runner Hard uh, Cider. I think was one of them. Uh, Bad Motivator IPA. Gamorrean Ale. The white wampa ale and the gold squadron lager. That's what I tried. Yeah, and these were in um, the teeth of a rancor beast, in a collectible uh, <laughs> little uh, uh, you know glasses that you can take home and stuff. In fact, um, Larry, you uh, took a couple pictures inside yeah, the bar, didn't you? I let's, did. Uh, indeed. Let's take a look at them. That is the gold uh, squadron lager, the one with the. Um, that doesn't have uh, any foam or anything on it. And you see the two uh, tiki cups that Paul was talking about um, that were available as well. Um, there was another one 
oh, I don't know if I can get this to to go or if you can see it. But it actually fizzes. Mm. And you can actually see the the uh, actual the fizz going. Yeah. yeah. Those are they're they're really fun and and they themed it very well. Um Ogus Cantina was, you know, based on like most likely Cantina or um the Cantina from Force Awakens. Uh, so you go in there and it is, you know, you got the, the, the bar in the middle. Um, they're, they're using, uh, droid heads for the tap. Uh, they have, um, these are different, these are different, uh, coasters that were, um, that are given to you when you get your drink. So, you know, it kind of has the theme of the Morian guard, um, uh, Viber blades, and you have the Rancor Beast, and all different types of, of coasters that give you a, a menu uh, with all the different types of drinks and then um, all kinds of things. In fact, Larry has a couple shots that uh, you'll be able to see of the inside of the cantina. There's one at the bar. Yes. Yeah, and what was funny was one of the um, compressors or whatever it was that they, they pour the drinks out of was starting to explode and you see one of the the bartenders and he's grabbing like a hammer and he hits it a couple of times and then it it clears off yeah <laughs> but it's like it's a show within a show so it really it really is remarkable the yeah. way they did that so very and you have to make reservations to go in there so um uh, right when you get to, to disneyland you're going to go to batu galaxy's edge you know be sure to get your reservation because it's very unique um and a, a very unique experience for for a star wars fan one of the um most unique uh aspects of the cantina is uh the dj oh and yes. inside galaxy's edge you have the music's playing you know hey it's a bar right yeah. a lot of the music is going and um right here this is a funko pop of the dj and he might look um, a little familiar uh he's actually in fact here's an older figure of what he's based off of and repurposed it is the droid from star tours the old star tours um <laughs> everything's repurposed yeah so it's very cool um how they they took the droid from star tours and made him the dj uh, of august Can uh, cantina so um the legacy of, of him uh, lives on and um it's it's a lot of fun he'll be he'll talk and, and say all kinds of things and, and play all types of music and everything so um a, a lot of uh a lot of unique things inside that cantina uh it really immerses you into the star wars universe and it feels like you know you're there you're ready for greedo to sit down and and you know <laughs> and try to strike a deal first. or Han, of course Han <laughs> shot first. Yeah. another unique item at uh, galaxy's edge when it comes to food is this spork <laughs> uh this spork uh you can purchase um, funny story, these were originally, so this is unique as, uh, when you ate at the docking bay, uh, restaurant there, um, you would have, uh, a spork given to you so you can eat your food, right? Uh, metal like spork. Like regular silverware. Yeah. yeah. And it's very, you know, very spacey looking, kind of has the angle to it and it has, you know, all here. Well, uh, they had a small issue and the issue is Star Wars fans will <laughs> collect anything. Anything. So, because this is unique to Galaxy's Edge, these unmarked <laughs> sporks were stolen and taken home. <laughs> so, Disney's like, no more plastic forks. You know, you're going to start taking away your silverware, you know, regular forks. But somebody had a great idea. And I think we talked about this. And uh, somebody, you know, they made it come true. Uh, they sell this now. <laughs> so, you can buy it in your little pouch and you can bring this with you. And... Uh, you know, bring your own little spork. So for everyone that was stolen, they got their money back. They got their money back, yeah. So, <laughs> and people would steal these and try to and be selling them on eBay for like a hundred bucks. Oh my god! So now you can just buy it for ten. <laughs> like, so for all you people who bought it for a hundred dollars, you are now uh, ripped off. <laughs> the last thing I want to show you when it when it comes to food are these little buttons. Uh, this is a milk stand button and a Ronto Roasters button. These are from the uh, stands that are inside there. And these are buttons that were given to you if you bought your food using the mobile order app for uh, Galaxy's Edge. So, you know, it promoted the app and then you went to go pick up your food 
And if you're an annual pass holder that used it, you got these free buttons mm. along with it. So a nice little collectible uh, for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge for the food items. Uh, so here we have um, some items from Galaxy's Edge uh, from the uh, opening day, um, as well as the uh, opening uh, weeks to come and whatnot. These are the maps and guides to Galaxy's Edge. So your guide to Batu. So this is the guide uh, that was given out on opening day. All right, it's a very thick, thick map. All right, it has a little little opening uh, picture of the Falcon taken off. Uh, it includes uh, all the different uh, rides uh, that are there, the rules, um, restaurants, all types of information um, about it. Um, so this is the opening day guide. And then along with that, you would get uh, a merchant and food guide because, of course, any Disney fan or any Star Wars fan will want to know where can I eat and what can I buy. <laughs> so it includes a map of Batu with all the rides and all the different areas where you can purchase and um, eat um, throughout the land. No wonder that was such a journey. When I came into Galaxy's Edge, I didn't know, you know, how it was laid out. But look where the Falcon is. Yeah. When you come in, you are walking. <laughs> So the, the entrance over here on the left, this is coming in from Splash Mountain yes. and Haunted Mansion. All right, so it's going through uh, through Critter Country, through New Orleans Square over here. The right entrance over here, or the east entrance, is coming through from uh, the north side of Big Thunder Mountain. Okay, that is the uh, through uh, Frontierland. Mm. Right when you right when you come out of Fantasyland into Frontierland, that that is where the um, the annex to um, Galaxy's Edges, these different areas. So, very big, very cool. Uh, and then also, um, this is a general map. This is a Disney map, and it, this one came out uh, when Rise of Resistance finally opened at Disneyland. And then this last one here are the uh, provision and merchant guide to Galaxy's Edge. Of course, more information on. What you can buy and where can you eat. <laughs> <laughs> Very important because yeah. you get tired walking that, uh, that, that park. But, the, you know, the, when we went, the lines weren't, weren't long, at least to uh, go into no. the rides. Well, when we went, um, actually when it first opened the first month, um, you had to make a reservation to get into Batu to get into the, that land. And so uh, we actually registered online and got reservations and then when you went to disneyland like here we went this one's we got these wristbands for friday june 7th all right 2019 and it only allowed you to be there for a certain amount of hours so the red one we were there from 11 to 3 and the yellow one from 2 to 6 so yes we overlapped and got to be in there for what about seven hours <laughs> <laughs> but, but because they did that the lines weren't that that bad the only so many people they allowed in yeah, and it didn't feel like we were waiting in line. I mean, there was a line, of course, but it, it didn't feel like you were waiting that long. I mean, I think at the, at the most we were, what, 15 minutes or 10 minutes? Yeah. So, and then they pick you off as a group of six. But, of course, if you have six in your group, then you got the crew. So you got the two yeah. pilots, you got the gunners, and then the, the engineering. So, I mean, thanks to Paul that had been there before. <laughs> he let me sit in the cockpit, so oh, that course. was fun. That, that now, really. what was, as a fan from 77, walking through Batu, walking through Galaxy's Edge, and then walking into the Falcon, what was that like for you? You know what it was. <laughs> it meant the world to me, because you, you were walking, you were... You were in Star Wars. You were in an actual uh, trading post. It was it was remarkable. They had uh, the ships, uh, the X-wings, uh, some of the, the speeders, the land speeders. My my whole purpose that day was to see the Falcon, mm -hmm. and it just seemed like a, such a long, <laughs> long walk to get it. And then you round this corner, and all of a sudden, there she is. Yeah. And Paul's um, son was with us, and he saw me react, you know, when I saw the oh, Falcon. Yes. <laughs> and he went to his mom, and he says, Mom, Mom, quick, look at Larry, look at Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I just stood there in awe, because finally, 
it was like a dream come true. I was seeing the Falcon. Yeah. Full size ready, you know, and it, it just, and I think uh, one of the, the uh, staff at, Disney, at Galaxy's Edge, she came up to me and she says, the look on your face right now makes me feel like you'd like that in your backyard, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> they definitely know who the fans, uh, you know, are, are when they walk into Galaxy's Edge and especially the ones who've been waiting for this all their life. Exactly. And I didn't even think about pictures yet. I was still just standing there looking at it. Yeah. But yeah, it it was the best time I ever had. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fantastic, that was a fantastic day. It was just awesome not for me to uh, see Larry's reaction. In fact, I was more excited to see Larry's reaction than my kids' reaction. I think Larry had the reaction I wanted for my kids. <laughs> they liked it, but Larry loved it. And I just felt like a, I felt like a proud dad. <laughs> like, oh, Larry, you, met, you got your dream come true. And it, it was just a very um, fun day. We got to immerse ourselves in Star Wars, ride the rides of Star Wars, be part of that universe, eat inside the universe, drink inside the universe, you know. Interact. Interact. And it, it was just a, a day that um, I'll remember forever yeah. and uh, is going to be, you know, cherished for life. Definitely. Yes. Thank you again. And we hope you enjoyed the Cal Poly Pomona University Library Star Wars Virtual Display Tour. Uh, we hope you enjoyed our, our stories. Our experiences, our memories, and of course... Our collectibles. Yeah. That's why we're here. So hopefully our collection, the love of Star Wars, has hopefully it's shown through. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed our tips and, and tricks and our insights in Star Wars. And, and the trivia. The trivia, yes. You know, there's a lot of trivia to Star Wars. And, you know, after you watch this video, watch the movie. Or if you're going to see a concert, do it in a music hall like Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Because there's nothing like listening to that music inside that venue. Yeah. And if you have any comments, questions, or anything you'd like to share, put it in our comments sec section, and then we'll get back to you. Yep. Meanwhile? Well, thanks. My name is Paul Hottinger. I'm Larry Heiser. And may, may the, the force be with you. you. Oh, man, we're good. <laughs> <laughs>